How's it going, everybody? Today is the day. We're going to talk about my favorite things that I looked at and reviewed in 2023. The housekeeping up front, there is no order to this list because literally it is all over the place. And I will do my best to find the cheapest links at the time of recording and posting for you to use. Some of those links will be an affiliate code. If you use that link, hey, you get my thanks. I do appreciate it. I will always try to put the cheaper of the links first, but I will sometimes put my uh, affiliate code in there regardless. So take that first one if you always want the cheapest way. That's just me being as objective as I can. So let's take a look at some of these amazing, cool pieces of kit. Okay, first on the list are the medical kits from Refuge Medical. This could be any first aid kit, and I'm really doing this as just a, a civic reminder that if you go out in the field to do portable amateur radio, particularly summits on the air, you could find yourself in your own personal emergency or stumble upon someone having their own personal emergency, and having a first aid kit is paramount. I will link the video where this was reviewed by K6ARK, Adam, and Kevin, W6RIP, both search and rescue volunteers. They gave both the personal first aid kit and the car bag or the camp bag their seal of approval at least from what was put into it again i'm linking this this doesn't mean you have to buy from them refuge they make a good piece of kit it's pretty expensive though you may be able to do better on your own this is strictly a reminder please have a first aid kit please i don't want to see you get hurt and potentially die out in the field when you could have the right things available to protect your life or someone's life please oh and uh get training too please. <laughs> this is going to be a weird video because really the Yesu VX6 is going to be the only what I would call traditional ham radio that's going to be making the lineup. It was a quirky year and I really went after just the things I wanted to talk about and the VX6 was something that came from my interview that I did with the tech prepper. He's done a lot with this radio and its size and its robustness being uh, water resistant or submersible was kind of my big reasons to getting it and uh, I've really really enjoyed it. It's a very simple radio and actually it's it's kind of a little long in the tooth. I've mentioned it even last year. It was a part of my list last year if I remember correctly but uh, it is still pretty good radio and I've used it multiple times as a staple radio when I might when I'm doing my in the park testing now we used a couple of solar panels in the field and they weren't always the front of show I mean no offense to solar panels like these but there isn't really a 10 minute video I can do about a solar panel like did I put it in the Sun yeah is it putting out close to at least half of what the stated output is uh, yeah okay so it's, it's probably good anyway it's a shout out here this is the gigaparts 150 watt explorer foldable panel this is the heavy side this is like your car camping your poda operator your field day operation somebody that can carry around something bigger than this juxtaposed to my second favorite solar panel which was the power film 20 watt this guy pretty much went with me everywhere here it is open 20 watts of power right at your disposal, incredibly light and uh, really easy to pack and just kind of have with you at all times. And I've just been marrying that with one of my other favorite things, the Dennis AD6DM Denco batteries. These were something that have been in the works for a long time. This is the one I actually made, uh, but I also bought one straight from Dennis as well. His is actually a lot better made, huh? Who would have thought? Anyway, really good batteries. Thanks, Dennis, for doing what you do, man. Contrast the VX6, which is a, you know, a pretty decent radio, all the way to my, which definitely was my favorite handheld, bar none, the Pico APRS, the tiniest APRS transmitter, KISS TNC, Digipeter, VHF simplex transmitter for voice, and also you can program repeaters on this for VHF. Yeah, it's VHF only. Yes, it's one watts. Uh, yes, it did pass the ARRL standards for spurious emissions. This thing was like with me at all times because if you just take off the little antenna here and put them side by side, they <laughs> just so tiny, fits everywhere, charges off of USB-C, does firmware upgrades over Wi-Fi, has Bluetooth, pretty much everything you want it to do, this will do. This is a limited device, I appreciate that, and certainly it's only VHF, but if you want those non-voice things, like I talk about TNC for doing WinLink packet, uh, or you want to do APRS, this is the way. 
Regarding HF radios, the first one I'm going to mention is the QRP Labs QDX Digital Transceiver. This is like for FT8 and JSA call. That's all this is. It is a QRP, literally has a battery strapped to the back of it. So just focus on this part. Yeah, the rubber legs have fallen off. It has a USB connection on the back. This is for just doing like portable JSA call. That was what I primarily used it for. I did make some contacts with uh, with WSJTX FT8, but I found that uh, my primary use case was just as a cool little messaging device over HF. This is the low band version, which takes you all the way down to 80 meters. Um, they make a high band version that goes from 20 up to 10. So really, you just kind of have to decide what you want. If I were to get one today, I would go with the 20 through 10. Unless you are totally a night owl, then go with the 20 through 80 model. And I'll post a link in the description. And of course, the reason for this is I could set this up let this do its thing in the background, either replying to people for signal information, relaying messages, receiving messages asynchronously, and I could also post data and updates to anyone who would be listening. To me personally, I think this setup is one of the coolest emergency personal communication preparedness devices that you can get. So that's why it gets the nod today. And I've got it backed up with this talent cell battery. I have not charged this thing in probably three months and I've used it once, not for very long, but just amazing. The battery pack in the back, as long as you turn it off, works really well. It runs off of a couple of 18650 batteries and it can also run a USB-A plug for a device, but I primarily just use the DC coaxial output. Now that QDX all fits into this little nylon, ballistic nylon, ripstop nylon bag called the Cubelet from Tom Bin. Tom Bin got mentioned a couple of times this year and it's all thanks to Thomas Witherspoon, K4SWL, who tuned me on to Tom Bin bags. I've ended up kitting out a lot of my smaller QRP radios into small bags like this. This is obviously probably one of the smallest. With this, I can have the radio, the battery, I can get Kasich ARK antenna in there, and I can also put in a little GPS dongle as well. And so this just requires a laptop really and a mast or a throw bag or something like that to get on the air and you're good to go. This is called the Handy Little Thing, which I have shown on video, but the cool part about this guy is, put your hand in there as a holder, and then you can open it, and you can get full access to all the gear. So there's coax, wire for antenna. I have my T1 tuner in here from Elecraft, as well as another QRP radio, usually a mountain topper or something along those lines, or hey, maybe even my KX1. Tom Bin Bags makes backpacks and something for people who travel a lot, like duffel bags and whatnot. So I would recommend you go check out their website. They offer colorways in just about any configuration you want that's, that they have. So really cool stuff. I'm not an affiliate, but highly recommended. If you saw the backpacking trip I did with K6ARK, you might have seen this low pro kit and you're like, Josh, you just showed a bag. What's the, why, why is this one different or special? Well, this is a hard-sided or semi-rigid hard-sided case. It is a camera case made by Lowepro, but what it's holding inside of it is my entire KX2 kit. And that's gonna be the next item we talk about is the Elecraft KX2. I'll drop a link for the Lowepro, but the real reason is the, the Elecraft. You having a good time listening to me talk about my favorite things in 2023? Well, if you are, give me a thumbs up and consider commenting below with what your favorite thing was this year. Well, what, why am I talking about the Elecraft KX2? What's new about it in 2023? Well, a huge thing, actually. The reason why I didn't use this radio as often as I do now is you couldn't charge it externally from the DC coaxial input. You had to actually remove the battery that's internal and actually one of the best aspects of this radio is that internal battery. And you have to charge it externally or just, just run it off the external coaxial port. And that's what a lot of people did because there's a speaker wire in here that it's not fragile, but at the same time, how many times you wanna be opening and closing that on a pretty expensive radio. And my answer is like never because I've got hammer hands and I damage everything that I put in front of them. So I was always hesitant to use this even though it's designed to be taken out in the field and that's where it wants to be until this year. Elecraft came up with a special charging board 
a drop-in charging board where you have to do very little. It drops in place, it takes out the stable clock, it actually replaces the stable clock and adds internal charging. So when you plug this in to an external source like you know 13.8 volts, it'll show an indicator light here telling you, yay verily, you're charging the internal battery. And so that means you can also charge it with a solar charge controller or just uh, an external 12 volt source as well. This quickly became my grab and go radio in that low pro kit because it could go in any bag. It had the AX1 antenna, another K6 ARK N fed, and I was ready to go. And yeah, that means we're gonna give a shout out to K6 ARK as well. Here is his tiny little microphone uh, that I built, and this goes with the KX2. And yep, I did my whole activation in the Sierra backpacking trip with this uh, little microphone. Now, this is really a mention to all of K6 ARK's kits. He is just one man who has a career and a life outside of ham radio, but he does make really cool kits that are available on Amazon and through his website, which I will link. He takes a lot of time out of his day to put cool things together for amateur radio, a lot for his own personal enjoyment, but the fact he goes the extra step and makes them available to you all, either in kit form or for his plans and his 3D print projects that are available off of his website, I think deserves a lot of respect. And so whenever I can, I try and buy K6 ARK when it comes to things like cool designs like his microphone, his CW key, and obviously his antennas, which are QRP all the way up to 100 watts. Links will be in the description. Thank you, Adam, for what you do, and happy holidays, man. Now, it feels pretty often that Rig Expert comes out with a new stick device, and this year's no different. This is the Stick 1000 or Stick 1 Gigahertz. This is available pretty much everywhere now. For me, I feel like stepping up and purchasing an antenna analyzer is one of the first largest steps you can do into the world of high frequency radio, which is where I want to get you all. So it doesn't have to be the stick, although I highly recommend them. Stick 500 is probably my sweet spot, probably the sweet spot for most of you. But the Stick Pro line does some things like R and X testing that you can't necessarily get with the standard stick. So do keep that in mind if you can swing the stick pro 600 the all black one that's the sweet spot from my point of view for the capabilities that you want if you want to get good at building antennas you're going to need a device like this Josh, talk about some antennas. What were your favorite antennas this year? Well, we got the, the Buddy Hex out into the field, I believe three or four times, and we got it into some pretty interesting locations. I can definitely say that I'm probably the only person who has assembled a Buddy Hex on San Clemente Island, which I'm wearing a shirt for right here. Ha ha ha! Thank you, Austin. Anyway, go watch that video if you haven't. Um, anyway, the Buddy Hex is a fantastic antenna. It has continued to be my favorite portable antenna option. If I've got the time, I'm always going that route. Probably my next most deployed antenna that would be for a 100 watt radio. I didn't really activate 100 watt radios uh, most of 2023. It was, it was mainly QRP radios for POTA and obviously the soda attempt that I did recently. The Chameleon Portamast with the rollover plate, specifically that was really, really nice this year because you could use it with an NFED half wave. I used it with a Delta loop. You could put a vertical uh, on top of it using just about any one of the Chameleon antennas and that worked perfectly. That was really, really nice when I was just driving around in my truck and we were doing we were doing a camp out like with the Cub Scouts or we were doing our HRCC camp out earlier this year. That mass system worked perfectly and came in really clutch. Okay, different kind of cool. Although I, I really enjoyed my time with the Anytone AT6666. This was uh, thanks to John Amadeo for mentioning this. He was saying, hey, you really should make a video to encourage technicians to get onto Parks on the Air. I did that. I think it helped. Hopefully it did. Post below if you got if you're a technician and you got into POTA because of me. I don't know if people are gonna wait that long to post that, but hey, thanks, I appreciate it. And <laughs> really do recommend the uh, AT6666 in a certain case, I'll talk about that. And then the QT60. The QT60 from Radioddity, uh, this is actually also a pretty cool radio. This is a loaner though, they let me borrow this and the AT6666 I did pay for. There's a longer deep dive review of this coming out, but um, I did like it enough and I felt it was a step up over the AT6666. It's also bigger, so keep that in mind. It's it's actually considerably bigger than the 6666. So if you want something smaller, 
stick with the 66, 60. How many times are you gonna say 66, 66? Okay, so why is this cool? Well, I think it's cool for people that really aren't sure about amateur radio. They don't know if they're gonna commit to it. Uh, they don't know if they're going to want to get general. They just have lots of unknowns. And, and it's also good for hams who have a friend who's a technician. And maybe you're having a hard time getting them to commit to, to general or something along those lines. This is a great intermediate radio. You can always gift this to somebody after you're done with it, right? Because it's like 200 something bucks, right? It's not very expensive. One of the major issues I have with amateur radio is to get people engaged enough that they'll want to get the next step, which is the general license. The general license, I feel, is where radio really becomes fun. Now, that's of course not for everybody, but I argue that if you took a sample size, a survey of people, more people are gonna find HF radio th doing things like POTA and SODA, contesting, antenna building, just digital modes like FT8, you're gonna find that much more rewarding than just staying towards the technician portions of two meter and 70 centimeter and talking on repeaters. Now, this isn't a world where you must do one or the other. We're gonna, of course, do all of it, but really, Ham radio opens up when you get onto HF and the 10 meter window is open right now. And so it's a great time for these type of radios to be fun for technicians to use. So that's why it's on my list. The AT66 and the QT60 from Radiotity. I think as far as my favorite purchase and also I think most beneficial to my channel in terms of getting information out to you is a tool, an actual really super valuable tool is the Tiny SA Ultra. This, uh, you can say thank you to the Smokin' Ape for recommending this. Totally agree. Do not get the Tiny SA, get the Tiny SA Ultra. If you have the money, the RNL price is the best. Again, I will post the price. The first link is going to be the best price. This, if you are looking to do spurious emissions testing or testing the harmonics or where your radio is transmitting in and around those areas, this device is amazing for the price. It is so hard to get something that goes from two meters and higher up into one gigahertz. So you can get multiple harmonics on transmit up. This does it. The Tiny SA splits it from a low side to a high side. So you're really only ever seeing like the second harmonic and then you have to switch to high side. This will give you the whole shot from two meters all the way up to basically one gigahertz and higher. And it works just as you'd expect. It is a really, really nice device. It is one of the coolest test tools I've used in a while. And for the size and price, pretty much unbeatable. And again, even though this is the last item, that doesn't mean it's the best item, but I was the most surprised and impressed by the capability of the compact antenna. This antenna really surprised me. It beat pretty much all the mobile antennas we tested as far as two meter simplex goes, and it was competitive within the 70 centimeter space. Now, I still need to go back and do some future testing with this. This is also supposed to be omnidirectional, so it's supposed to work okay with doing satellite communication, FM satellite, like from your mobile off the back of this, you know, off the back of your truck, that'd be great as well. So future videos are gonna come out about this. Um, I still think that <laughs> it's surprising enough and effective enough that a mobile antenna setup or something at your house, this takes up very little space. It's very low profile. And this might be the option maybe that you'd like to take a look at. So there you have it. That is my subjective list of my favorite things in 2023. My personal opinion, not necessarily backed up by data, just my feelings and what I had the most fun with over the course of the year. If you would like a more objective list of things that are no joke, the best antennas, the best radios, that sort of thing, then I would encourage you to go take a look at my no nonsense, every man approach playlist for testing amateur radio equipment. And while I'll probably be making a video in the future talking about my favorite radios from 2023, you can rest assured that if you just use this list, you're finding the coolest stuff that came out in 2023, or at least that I found out about in 2023. I'm Josh KI6NAZ. I appreciate everybody for watching the videos throughout the year. The time you've taken to hang out with me in our live streams, even answer questions in our discords, or hey, 
ask questions in our Discord. Just being a part of that community has been fantastic. Arguably, we have the best community in all of amateur radio. This isn't a competition, though, so just keep in mind, we're always looking for more people to hang out with. Come join us in the Discord. The link is in the description. It's just a fun location to be able to ask questions, help people out by answering questions, and just have the camaraderie of being a part of the ham radio community. I'm Josh, KI6NAZ. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll talk to you later. 73.